Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. We are once again live down <laughs> here in the Bear Cave Studios for another episode of On That Bill Shit, OTBS, with me, your host, Freddie Loso, with my co-host, Biggie Mafia. What's going on, bro? Hey, yo, man. What's what's going on, man? Uh, yo, we got another we got another guest on this week, man. Yo, we keeping this guest trend going. Uh, we gonna try to keep it up for as long as we can. Pause. That sounded mad crazy. Uh, <laughs> sounded sounded wild on the opening opening part of the show. Yo, listen, man. Let me introduce y'all to this brother sitting right here, man. Yo, this dude. I've known this dude for over ten years. I've worked with this brother. This is a uh, another one of my 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 close friends. Uh, some of y'all might know him as Kelvin Lorenzo. Some of y'all might know him as Case Spinner from the football years. Y'all also might know him as a dude that might have broken y'all cars back in the <laughs> early 90s who used to steal y'all car radio. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He used to break into your, 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 your car, stealing your windows. You might have caught him climbing out of your, your, your kitchen window a, a couple times, you know what I'm saying, with a couple of your items. You know, my man Spinner, yo, yo, Spinner, what it is, bro? What's good with you, man? Yo, what's going on, baby? <laughs> what's going on, Oso? <laughs> hey, yo, yo, you. Man. Yo, what's the deal? And I just want to give y'all a heads up um, for, for, for the rest of the show. My man Oso is, is stepping down off of Cloud Nine. He just indulged in um, some, uh, you know, some some brownies. That, that he didn't get from the supermarket. So, if you see, you see the dark circles around his eyes. I'm not turning into a vampire. Yeah. Yo, well, yeah, uh, he, he, was, he was at his house filming Half Baked Part 2, minus Dave Chappelle and the rest of the cast. <laughs> you know, it's all good, man. It's all good. Yo, uh... Hey, E, before you get up? into it, What's up? Um, let's give a shout out to our good friends at Patience Faith Customs on IG. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. For the dope shirts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OTBS podcast. We're going to throw the link down below so you guys go check them out. They're local. It's a family run business and it's uh, awesome. The quality is great, the images are dope. <clears throat> And it was a super quick turnaround. So big shout out. Anything you guys need, check them out. Yes, Links sir. below. Yes, sir. Uh, always great to, you know, pick up some business and some advertisement. You know, just want to throw that out there. All right. So listen, man. Listen. Y'all know the name of this show is On That Bill Shit. This is not a primary sports show. All right. We do like to bring up sports. Uh, you know, the things that we're interested in that you guys might be uh, talking about or hearing about in, on, on the news or whatnot. Some big things happening with the Bills this week, right off the drip. When I when I found out the news, if you guys haven't heard by now, I'm sure you have. The Buffalo Bills have traded away our wide receiver one, our primary go-to target, Stephon Diggs, to the Houston Texans for a couple of draft picks. I'm not a big fan of this. I wasn't at the time. One, one draft pick. One draft pick. Well, the one draft pick that we drafted him away for. Uh, you know, we 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 were. I, I know I was in an uproar. I know also was in a little bit of, of an uproar. But you know, your spinner in, in our Bills chat, man. He's kind of like the. Uh, he's like the anchor. Uh, so to speak, he's the one that he you know he kind of tries to, to 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 change the temperature in the room and all of that. He, he kind of felt like we was making a big deal out of nothing. Yo, Spin, explain yourself to the people, man. Why do you feel like we're gonna be better off now that we got rid of Diggs? I ain't say better off, but I think I'm optimistic because I love Diggs, man. He, he's right on my wall right there, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but. You might have to throw that in the garbage pot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but when he was here, man, he was great, man. He broke some records for us. He was, but what I could also see the truth when he came to us, he was a deep threat. 
Mm-hmm. Over the last couple of years, he's been more like a possession wide receiver. And we we traded him for number one. I mean, when we first got him, and now we traded him back for a number two, which is for a 30 year old wide receiver is great. For Keenan Allen, who had better numbers than him, they got a fourth round draft pick. So, and I just think our offense is going to share the ball around more. You know, a lot of teams don't run with a with a, a number one, like a real number one wide receiver. And I think that's just the way we're going, man. I just think our wide receiver room is so light right now. Like, our best receiver is Curtis Samuel. Oh. <laughs> like, that's a KK. <laughs> you're right, for real. But I think that's the type of offense we're going to start running. It's that Chiefs, you don't really have to have that stud receiver on the outside. You go all, your offense goes through the tight end. All right, so let me ask y'all a question, man. Because I, I done heard this a couple times now. You know, y'all, y'all just said this. We are not the Chiefs, first of all, all right? I know a lot of people saying that we kind of, we, we might curtail our offense and start running our games like the Chiefs. The Chiefs don't have a number one receiver and all this other stuff. I love Allen to death. I'm willing to go through the ups and downs with him like we have. Unfortunately, Josh Allen is not Patrick Mahomes. I'm just going to say it like that. Yes, he's an elite receiver. Yes, he's top three, four, five uh, um, quarterbacks, I apologize, in the league, hands down. But we all know that when it comes to some of the decisions that need to be made in the crunch time, Allen is not making the same decisions that Mahomes can make. So that's why Mahomes can get away with not having a number one receiver. And y'all feel like I'm right? Or, or like, Spinner, what you think, man? Am I wrong? Do you think I'm over? always playing Josh Allen down, man? <laughs> he can't win all the games for us, man. And, and, and Mahomes didn't win a lot of the games by himself either. It takes a team, man. And, and you know, it's, it's not just the Chiefs. The Chiefs are the model because they have Kelsey and stuff. But a lot of offenses run through a tight end and – okay and decent wide receivers around them man so if you if you see when um brady took over for us man he was spreading the ball to everybody and we were still putting up crazy numbers so i don't feel like unless we get justin jefferson now i don't feel like we need a number one wide receiver there's a lot of good wide receivers coming in the draft that could give us that deep threat and josh allen makes he makes See, I hate that when people say he makes bad decisions, but when he jumps going out of bounds and he throws the ball and it's a touchdown, <laughs> everybody loves him, right? But if yeah. he makes that play and he throws an interception, oh, here goes Josh Shot. You got to live with that, man. That's the type of play. The same thing with Lamar. When Lamar takes the ball and he runs and he fumbles the ball, you're not going to say stop running with Lamar because you know the next play he might give you an 80-yard run. Hey, man. All right, bro. Listen, like I said, bro, I'm willing to ride or die with our team. We have been. Hey, yo, we all been Bills fans for a long time, bro. We done had our heart broke more times than more times than we could count, man. And I, I never want to say that I'm gonna give up hope. I, I, I never. I would never say that. But at some point, bro, the shit just get. Yo, the shit just get too much, man. Like, yo, we done been through all the bullshit through the 90s. Then we had to suffer all the way through the 2000s. And now we... I'm going to ask y'all to honestly, and Spinner, just be honest, bro. Enough of your bullshit talk that you be trying to bring up the hopes and all this other stuff. Are we in trouble, yes or no? Look at your face, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? I was trying to look at also, but in, in, in trouble as far as what, man? You know where I think we're in trouble? Our defense. And I've been saying that for the last three or four years. You Come on, man. Even in the Chiefs game, we put up 24 points. We should be able to win that game. We made him, we made him punt once that game. One yeah. Time. Yeah. Like, come on, man. You, everybody, no, Mahomes doesn't put up 50 points. 
You know, a lot of these teams, you don't win by putting up 50 points. It's like everybody's so focused on offense. My thing is the defense. Uh, we got these pass rushes. We don't get no sacks. We don't That's... get. We don't force turnovers. So until we can fix that, I don't know, man. To be honest, we need we need to stop the run. Last year, the not last year, the year before that was we couldn't stop the run. Right, everybody running on us. Then we go in the playoffs. The Bengals throw the errors out. <laughs> For real. Then, then we come back, and this year we we we, I don't know. We couldn't just put a whole game together. We was going back and forth and. We always had to rely on Josh Allen to make that play for us. Why can't we go into a game where once he puts up four touchdowns, we can relax? Why nobody ever says that? Everybody says, oh, Josh Allen made a bad play. Josh Allen made this bad throw. Yeah, because he got to force up and try to score every time he gets the ball. It's not fair to him. Okay. So on that note, also, I'm going to ask you this first. And then, Spin, I want you to answer because y'all already know how I feel about Von Miller. <laughs> also, yo, 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 Fred, be honest, bro. Let, let him ride out or pack him up? For me, off of last season, pack him up. He had less tackles than Stephon Diggs. And Stephon Diggs <laughs> plays on offense. Like, come on, man. He didn't show up until maybe third quarter of that Kansas City game in the playoffs. And we're we're stuck with, you know, his 15 mil hit against the cap. Like, it's wow. We're already eating Stefan Diggs 31 million from this year. Like, and Trey White 16. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Damn, man. It's a lot of money that we can't use. Yo, Spender, what's up, man? I know you've been... Yo, you've been riding this dude, Miller, since we signed this dude, man. Like, what's up, bro? What's up? I mean, you got to give him the – he's older. He came off an injury. I give him this at least half of this season. <laughs> if he doesn't perform <laughs> – That's a long time. I give him, like, six games, man. See what he can do. If he don't got it, then, yeah, we're going to pack him and you up. <laughs> you gonna pack me up? <laughs> yeah, you out of uh, here, man. Yo, damn, bro. You gonna you been saying you're gonna pack up my mafia shit, man, for the past five years, bro. I don't know what that's about, bro. Yo, man, ever since you got on my knee on your knees in my Hey face, yo, hey yo, yo. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, go ahead. Yo, yo, listen to this this lie of a story that this dude gonna tell. I'm lying. Go ahead. Say I'm Guess, lying, man. You, I'm lying. What you lying? You're <laughs> fucking lying. Hey, now you want some Diddy shit, B. <laughs> you want some Diddy shit. The kids you know, thinking, the shows, they, they trust us to tell the truth, man. You no, know? what's the truth? What's the truth? That you got on your knee? I mean, listen, man. Yo, first that of was, all, that was the year, fucking crazy. The year we was playing the, the um, who was it? The, the Texans okay. playoff. The year, we, the year we played the Texans, I went to his crib. We watched the playoff game. And it was all, yo, this dude got. This you got on your knee. Yo, hey, yo, tell him, tell him. Tell him, tell him. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, come on, man, we need this. I said, yo, like, <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that shit. <laughs> yo, 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 this thing is crazy. Man in my face. This thing is crazy, B. Yo, listen, that's <laughs> word to everything I love. This thing has been telling that lie. About about yo, first of all, this thing is crazy, B. This thing is crazy. This thing is crazy, and he's a fucking pathological liar. <laughs> he's gonna keep the oh man, I wish I could remember who was there that, that day, man. That first saw you. All, was like, first yo, of all, wasn't your brother there? Wasn't Eddie there? Yeah, he <laughs> Yeah, exactly. First of all, yo, yo, first of all, what happened was we was losing at the end of the game, and I think it was a field goal or something like that. I took a knee in front of the TV. Now this thing, every year, like, oh, like, oh, this thing is on the TV. First of all, I took a knee because we was getting ready to kick a field goal to tie the game or something. I forgot what happened. You but, yo, a, you can't. You took a knee for Colin Kaepernick, right? That's what you're going to say now, right? <laughs> see, yo, you see what I'm saying, bro? This dude be talking crazy, coming up with retarded stuff. Yo, he, yo he's worse than this dude that we used to work with. I ain't going to put his name out there. 
This dude was a pathological liar. Uh -huh. And he... <laughs> And you know what? God rest the dead, because the brother has since passed, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the dude was a pathological liar. And I'm going to tell y'all one story in particular that we, we laugh about all the time. This dude was at work with us one day. And, 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 and L, stop me at any point that I'm getting this story wrong. He was at work one day, and the dude just started breaking down crying. But the dude just started breaking down crying like 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 sobbing. So, you know, the brothers asked him, like, yo, like, what's going on, man? Well, like, is everything all right? The dude tells tells everybody that his son <laughs> his son needed an emergency bone marrow transplant. <laughs> hold on, hold on. He starts telling everybody that his son needs an emergency bone marrow. Yo, this, this is a true story. This is word to my kids. This is word to my kids. It's a true story. Yeah. Start Remember what Wilder what what said he'll donate his. <laughs> now, mind you, hold on. And correct me if I'm wrong. Prior to him telling us this story, nobody even knew he had kids. <laughs> nobody even knew that he had kids. So he starts telling people, you know, oh, my son needs an emergency bone marrow transplant. I don't know what to do. All of this, all of this stuff, right? So now you got you got people feeling bad, and you know, people talking about yo, let's take up a collection. Yo, like he just said, yo, well, who was on last week's show even offered to donate bone marrow. Just you know what I'm saying? Because he, he pulling on people's heartstrings. You know, dude left work, all good. The next day. 24 hours later, don't you know we saw this dude getting off the elevator and he started limping towards us? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, Shut hold on, up. hold on. Shut the dude starts up. limping towards He's us. Lying, <laughs> the dude starts limping towards us. So so everyone is looking like, yo, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is wrong with him? So he walks up to, to everybody and he's like, we're like, yo, yo, what's up? What's going on with you? Don't you know this dude goes, ah, yeah, you know, I did the bone marrow transplant <laughs> this, this morning. This is word to my kids. It's a true story. Let God strike me down if I'm lying. <laughs> dude starts telling people that he gave bone marrow, had the transplant four or five hours before he came into work. <laughs> Yo, the dude had a sickness, man. The dude That's had a wild. sickness. The dude commitment, had... though, I give it to him. <laughs> Yo, sickness, yo, can I tell one more, one more lie that he told? <laughs> can, I tell, can I tell just one more? And we're going to move on to this topic because, like I said, God rest the dead, the brothers, uh, you know, has since passed. <sighs> At this point, everybody knows that this dude is a pathological liar. You can't believe nothing that this dude is talking about because, you know, everything that he say is, is false and just craziness, right? So he starts telling people, Yo, I got I got these tickets to this Yankee game, man. Yo, tomorrow I'm gonna go to a Yankee game. All day he's telling people, yeah, man, yo, I'm gonna go to the Yankee game tomorrow. I got some good seats for the Yankee game. Everybody like, yeah, all right, man, whatever. Yeah, it's all good. Whatever. Nah, man, I'm going to the Yankee game. All right, cool. Next day, he, you know, he's not at work. He ain't paying his, you know, regular day. This dude calls up to the job. Hello? Yeah, man. Yo, I'm at the game right now. Everything is crazy. Yo, dudes is hitting the home runs. It's mad loud. And all you hear is noise in the background. All you hear is noise in, in the background. Yeah, it's crazy. Yo, dudes is hitting home runs left and right. All oh, this craziness, right? So he's talking. Talking. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever. Ah. All of a sudden, all you hear in the background, next on the WB11. Yo, yo, yo. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Yo, he hangs up the phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Again, word to my That's kids, so true story. Word to my kids, true story, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely was. <laughs> yo, 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 am I lying, bro? Am I lying with nah, either one? you're not, man. <laughs> he had stories for days, man. Dude, man, we could go on forever telling the lies of this dude. Yeah, man. man. 
I mean, it, one thing I give to him, man, when we was at work, like, you can rely on him. Anything right. that came out his mouth, though, no, you, you, you couldn't mess with it. Yo, you, yo, I used to give this dude a ride home, and I'm like, yo, we, where you live at? You know, and you know, everybody got, like, whatever, the, the number of the building. And he tells me two streets that don't even cross each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like what? They, they never merge. These two streets never merge. It's like 183rd and 184th. They run parallel to each other. It's like, it's like, I'm like, nah, that, that's not your address. He's like, yeah, you just put that. I'm like, right, you got it, man. You got it. Oh, man. Hey, yo, man. Hey, yo, listen, man. Yo, we, we, we. <laughs> We could tell stories for days about all of that shit that we used to deal with at work, bro. And, you know, not to, <clears throat> I don't want to stay too far off the sports topic just yet, but listen, I'm, I'm as usual, we're going to re- remain overly optimistic about, you know, next season. Because what other choice do we have? You know, we, we ain't been making too many crazy moves. We'll see what happens as far as the draft. You, you know, I just. Fan, man, I know you on the cover over there, man. You said I'm a, I'm a under now I'm an undercover Jets fan. Yo, this dude done. He, yo, he, his allegations is crazy, man. He'll he'll fuck around and say, yo, you know, he be calling Jimmy the uh, undercover Chiefs fan because his daughter's a Chiefs fan. Like this dude, he just this is a wild guy, man. I don't even know why he's. I'm surprised. Yeah, he I, just, yeah I I do go overboard a little times, but that story about you on your knees ain't a lie, man. I got witnesses. Yo, this dude, this dude is, is retarded. I got man. witnesses. <laughs> this dude, this dude is retarded, I'll man. Pull it up one this, day. <laughs> yo, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why this dude, you can't believe him. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why this dude is a living contradiction. This dude is a Dominican from the Bronx that's a Red Sox fan. What's the, I, but I told you the story, man. Listen. No, I don't, no, 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 dog, 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 dog. Is this, is the same reason why I became a Bills fan? Okay, what, well, how the fuck you become a Red Sox fan in the Bronx? So, okay, growing up, right, my brother's older than me by like, what is it, six years. Eddie's older than you by six years. Yeah, we okay. used to play video games. Mm-hmm. So, he, of course, he's the oldest, he will always pick the first team. So he picked the Yankees. I always wanted to play like I always would grab a team that's in the same division as a rival. So I went Red Sox. But um, he went New York Jets. I went Buffalo Bills. The clo- So I try to stay in the state of New York. It's just um, baseball only has the mess and they're on the opposite side. So if you're doing a season, you can't play with each other back then. You know, I'm talking, I'm talking mm. about the early 90s. And same thing in hockey. When we, uh, when I used to watch hockey, he went Rangers and Devils. I went Buffalo Sabres and um, Flyers. And the only New York team that I really got besides <laughs> the the Bills was the Knicks because he was, you know, everybody back then was Rod and Jordan. So he became a Bulls fan. So I said, oh, I'm taking the Knicks. Speaking of Bulls, man, that sounds like a bullshit story that you just told me. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. That no, shit you, don't... He, he's in one of our chats. You can ask him, man. I ain't asking Eddie nothing because he's just like you. He's a pathological liar and an instigator just, just like man, you. I'm just, I'm just loyal, man. Listen, I went through a lot of hard... I think my first Bills game that I ever saw was us getting smacked by the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and ever since, you know, and I cried for that 99 Music City miracle, man. And I'm still here, man. I will say this, and and I'm not even bullshitting. I honestly think that there's an air of bad luck and karma that comes along with this dude, Spinner. Every time that I've gone to his house and watched the Bills game, we've lost. Am I lying? You don't say how we blew out the Steelers when we went to the game, though, right? That's not what I... I, We did. We 100% did, and well was there, live and center, embarrassed, and almost got beat up by a gang of white boys. (laughs) <laughs> yo, 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 I'm a, I'm a diehard Bills fan, but that day I actually thought I was going to put hands on some Bills fans. <laughs> it was being very, I get it, man. Heckle, you could do whatever you want. Like, 
me and my wife, we go through it because we taking our son to a game and it's like people are heckling. I'm fine with the heckling. It's just don't cross my space and don't throw nothing on me. But that that kid in that Buffalo game was being like two up. That even his people say, "Yo, man, we gonna beat you up ourselves." <laughs> hey, yo, man, man. Son, it was crazy, man. Yo, let me tell you something. We went to a Bills game a couple years ago. It was the Steelers and Bills, the game that we smacked them. Like we just, I forget what the score was, but it was embarrassing. It was- thirty-eight seven, and only thirty-eight because we took out Allen in the third quarter. Yeah. Yes, that's true. And man, yo, when I tell you these dudes in, in, in Bill Stadium, they was they was they wasn't even drunk. They was high on something. These dudes came to the game. They was they was <laughs> high on something crazy. And you know, Weldon was already upset that uh his team was getting <laughs> his team was getting spanked. And on top of that, you know, these dudes, you know, sometimes people just get a little too comfortable. And 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 sometimes when people get in groups, they get they get a little more comfortable, and you know they crossed the line with him a little bit. And they, if it wasn't for the fact that we was all with him, he got beat up. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think so. It was. I mean, <laughs> that whole crew. It was only one guy that was acting like obnoxious, man. So, but nah. I just, I don't like seeing that, man. Like, enjoy your game. I, I've been to plenty of games, man. I've seen people like douse people with beer. And, oh, nah. man. I, I don't know, man. Listen. Because at, at the end of the, it's a lose lose situation. You 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 take that L there, and then if you do something to that person, it's like, oh my God, look at this animal, <laughs> you know. So you you get kicked out. You probably get banned or whatever. It's, it's, people shouldn't do it, man. I'm a I'm a firm believer, and I I I I love seeing a fan get their ass whipped uh, when they need it. Because I mean, you're 100 right. I've been at plenty of games where some people they just I don't know what it is, man. I, they just, I, I can't even say it's the alcohol, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't think it's the alcohol because, because some of these people don't even get that drunk to be acting the way that they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I take it all the way back to what happened in, what was it, Detroit? The, yeah, the Malice at the Palace when, yeah. when, when Homeboy ran up in the stands and, and washed up, washed up this dude. Who, he, he didn't even throw nothing at him. He just washed up a random. A random, yeah, a random. but I mean, he didn't know it wasn't him. He went after the guy. He thought that was him. It is what it is. But that's what I'm saying. You shouldn't be. I can't let you throw. If I was on the court, I would feel some way too. Why? Like, why you gotta sit there and take it? Now, with, with, with the with the artists, <laughs> where they throw something on them and they th- like Cardi B threw her mic. Like, she's right. Hey yo, so so you just said right. You've been at spots where you've been heckled with the wife. What's the worst experience you think you had? Uh, when you've been out, cause I know you, man, and I know you, and and and, and I'm gonna let y'all know. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. Like, Ella go into the middle of Yankee Stadium with a Red Sox jersey and hat on, cause he's stupid. You asked and him for it. You yeah, cause he, yo, he don't got no sense. Like, he'll fly all the way down to Miami with a Bills jersey on and all this other stuff. I'm gonna be respectful. I'm not doing that. You just see, he just did it last year. I'm not doing that because I feel like that's being disrespectful. That's just me. I'm not going to somebody else's stadium rocking a rival team's gear because I just feel like there's a certain amount of respect that comes with being a so being a fan. Scared. Ain't got time out. First of all, don't use that word with me. Listen, I listen, listen. Like, well, my, remember my brother? He wore a Jets jersey to the Steelers Bills game, but we wasn't playing the Jets. But this is what I'm saying. If had he got beat up, I would have picked him up after. Like you deserve that one. <laughs> what are you, your team's not even playing. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say how you guys feel about fans that go to games that their team's not in the game and they're rocking that jersey. Like when we went to Buffalo, there was a there was a dude in a Vikings Titans, yeah. a Vikings jersey. We're like, what? Why? I'm 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 cool with it. I mean, you know, it's, no, it's for what? What you mean for what? It's like, what, where what you gonna wear? What difference does it make? I mean, I I, that, 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 I don't know. That's just I just feel bad. like you're a cornball at that point. Like, oh, look at me. <laughs> you can wear whatever you want. Why are you wear these? That team that you have on has nothing to do with what's exactly. going on right now. 
And especially if it's like a division rival. Why? You, now that's disrespectful in my opinion. But if you go to a game and your team is actually playing, yeah, wait. And that's what I say. I don't. I don't care what you say to me. Like I had this one guy. When was it? Yeah, it was two years ago when I went to the Jet Stadium because uh-huh. I used to. Me and my brother always went, but this time we went with a bigger group. And he's sitting like seven rows up for me, but because I have my Buffalo stuff on, when we're up, he doesn't say nothing. As soon as they get the lead, oh, turning around, pointing. <laughs> then then he, my son got some Bills stuff on. He's like, oh, look, they doing so bad that he's falling asleep. My son was falling asleep. <laughs> and my wife took that person. I was like, as long as he doesn't cross our path or come in front of our face, I'm fine with it. Go ahead. You're up. You're winning right now. When I was leaving the stadium, everybody and their mother, ah, whatever you got. When I left Miami Stadium that year, all they kept saying was two or uh, two MVP. Like, look, <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. And they just that that was the game where um we lost like in the last second. We couldn't score in the last second. In the heat remember. down there two years ago. And I mean, listen. Yeah. Just don't don't touch me. I won't touch you. You don't touch me. And it's all fair game. So I'm going to ask this one last question, and then we're going to move off the bills. So you just said if your brother would have got beat up, you would have let him get beat up? I would have. I mean, if, it depends how many people is on. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you see what I'm saying? How you going to believe anything that this dude... This dude ain't loyal. <laughs> like if it's two, it's all right. You Three, can't that's be, where I draw the line. Why would you wear a Jets, a Jets jersey to a Bills Steelers game? <laughs> Yo, you found me. I would pick him up and then say, see, this is why you don't do this. <laughs> Yo, Yo, you found me. Yo, you a foul motherfucker, bro. <laughs> I ain't even gonna hold you. You a foul motherfucker. <laughs> For real, B. <laughs> For real. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hold on. Since we asking questions, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna tell you where this question came from. <laughs> Just know that we got some reliable sources. So I have a, I have a, a viewer who wanted me to ask you a question, Spinner. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. They told me to ask you. Oh, man. Why, when you were young, did you have five jobs <laughs> at once? <laughs> hold, on. Hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me ask the question, bro. Why did you have five jobs at one time? You said you worked in a, a pizza shop. I did. You worked in a hospital. Nah. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You worked in the hospital, Best Buy. You were a DJ, and you worked at a strip club all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, now that that's an unreliable. So he's right about all the job, but it's, it wasn't all at one time. Listen, I was. I mean, I had a. I had you a was daughter. Magic Mike. This is what you were. I, I was a hustler, man. I had a daughter when I was 18. So I just, I always had to work, man. The pizza shop was just consistent. I I lived down, like, across the street from it, so it was convenient. What you did I at did, the pizza shop? I used to make pizza, man. <laughs> you used to be a pizza? Yeah. You know, what, you know what's the funny part? The same person that told you to ask me these questions worked in that same pizza shop. <laughs> <laughs> With me. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I ain't and, and gonna lie. It, and that's and I used to DJ and but I DJ at like the strip club <laughs> in Queens back in it was right by our job, man. What 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 your what strip club? It was called Selena's. Selena's. But it, it, it shut it shut down like around I wanna say oh five or oh six. Yo, it <laughs> <laughs> Shit was crazy. I was in there working. Cops come in there real quick. The guys like, all right, man, I'm gonna pay you for the night. They let us go. 
Never opened up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. Come up. Come on, Pete. You're not just good. You're not just good. <laughs> you not just going to roll over. Run, run, run. Yeah, we're not just going. What you mean dudes would pay you for the night and just be like, yo, you know, I'm going to He paid us for the, When the cops came in that night, it was like, because he was open from like, I want to say 8 to 4, 10 to 4. And they came like a, before 12. So they the, the cops said we're shutting it down for tonight. He paid us for that night. That night for DJing. I don't know where you where you and Diddy going with this. <laughs> hey, yo, you just no said business. it, bro. I didn't say I didn't say it. You the one that said some dudes rolled in and paid you for the night. No, no. I yeah. said, I see what I'm talking about. I said the cops came in. And then after that, it just never opened. And you know what? It was a black brother that owned it. It was him and his wife. What did we what him being black got to do with anything? Because he was cool. I mean, because you got to understand where it was at. It was under the 7 train. That's more like a Hispanic neighborhood. Right. But he was weird, though. He had this 100-inch... An actual spot, though, if I'm lying. He had this 100-inch screen projectors, right? Oh. And this dude would, pay, would play bum fights. Or, like, the... Go <laughs> you remember them DVDs of people, like, getting killed or, like... Like, faces of death? Yeah! <laughs> it, it, and it was one of these small strip clubs where it's not like people going in, making it rain, none of that. But the quality was good, but it was mostly like working class people, older gentlemen coming in there in sweats with, with a couple of dollars. <laughs> and then you had like the lap dance room it wasn't even a room. It was out in the open, and he had this big screen playing this gory shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yo. that's wild. Oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> hey, yo, so I got one more question for this uh, reliable source. Right? <laughs> one more question, and then we go. We, 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 I'm going to let you live for right now. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to let you live. But this last question... Right when you used to work, when you used to work in the bar, right? What was the purpose of you getting the blow pop, dancing with a chick, and then try? Uh -huh. <laughs> then, wait, time out. Hold on. Let me ask the question. You would. <laughs> you couldn't even finish it the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Hold you got on. It. Just Hold on. Let me let me ask the question. <laughs> So you, when you worked at the bar, you would get a blow pop, and you would dance with a chick, and then you would try to get the chick to put the blow pop in her mouth. What the fuck? <laughs> what was you doing, bro? Can you explain yo, yo, yourself? Yo, man. <laughs> <laughs> was, you got it mixed up. He's talking about when we used to go out clubbing, man. But I mean. It helps to have a, a clean mouth, man. You know what I'm saying? Instead of giving them a piece of gum. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Damn, that, he's bringing it back to 2000 and, damn, 20 years ago. Woo. Oh, Trying man. to get me in trouble out here? <laughs> yo. Yo, you a deviant. Yo, listen, oh, man. We, we, always, we always put the proclaimer on the show. Listen, I'm a happily married man. Oso's a happily married brother. Spin, I know you're a happily married man. You've been so for a long time. Any stories that we talk about preclude any time that we know our women right. or know our wives or anything like that. That that claimer, that disclaimer is uh is well known. This is all, this is all, you know, just banter and talking about history. Those were the X bar days, man. The who? The X ball, man. X ball. What the hell is the X ball? Yeah, the the the, the club right off the Deegan. When you going north, you see right on Fordham Road. Yo, listen, I uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know the Bronx, bro. I'm from Brooklyn and I lived in Queens. You, you've never taken 87 going north. I have, I, but I, I stayed the on the highway. Park. That it used to be Jimmy's Bronx Cafe. Yeah, now it's um it's Bronx. um yeah. Back then, when we was going to it, was called X Bar. Then it changed to Sofa. Now it's Salsa Con Fuego. It's right off of, it's right yeah, off the highway. Matter of fact, Deegan, on okay. the way to the stadium. 
That's what he's talking about. That's okay. when you met. That's when your reliable source. He used to take honey and mix it with Grey Goose. Ask him that if he ever did that in his life. That was his drink. Honey chased with Grey Goose in the same cup. So, so let me ask you a question because you know this reliable source. You know our brother, our brother R Boogie. That's what we're gonna call him for for now. Just R Boogie. That for anybody listening, his name's R. We'll have him on the show soon. So any are there any any stories or any things that we should ask him when we when when he come on the show for future reference? No, nah, don't worry, man. I, I'll be I'll be sending you some. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brother, man. I love him, man. Love him to death. Yo, and he he yo. Let me tell you something. He's he's filled me in on many of occasions. Uh, from your childhood, especially all the times that you used to, <coughs> excuse me, you used to get beat up by the police. Oh, man. When... <laughs> Can we tell that story? I, I mean, come on, man. You know, <laughs> hard times living in the Bronx, man. You know, predating the time when we was on the job, this brother, and, you know, I'm pretty sure you're going to correct me if I'm telling this story wrong. These dudes was out drinking like some winos on a corner. <laughs> you, none of, we came from playing ball, man. It was just, you know, some racial profiling stuff on the corner. They come out and they, mind you, we all wearing basketball gear, man. They going to say that we fit the description of an armed robbery. <laughs> 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 and we standing there. So it just... I mean, I mean, maybe I was a little cocky and arrogant back then. I get this little cop. He's like, get on the wall. He's searching me. I'm like, yo, listen, man, I'm 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 one of yous. I'm one of you guys. <laughs> I'm like, and he's like, shut up, shut up. And this dude puts me in a headlock and shit. <laughs> like, it's, it's my brother, all boogie, and, and my cousin at the time, they all there. Nothing happens to them. He takes me in takes my brother in. Then after he finds out who I am, he's like, oh, why didn't you tell me about this? I said, yo, you asshole. I told you this when you were searching us, when you was looking for a gun on me, and I got basketball shorts on. So me, you know, I, being hard-headed back then, he gave me the out. He said, listen, man, we could just, you know, he gave us the whole CO trick. I give you some commissary, man. Just make sure. <laughs> He said, yo, you could just walk out of here. And, and me being stubborn, I said, nah, man. Nah, you just embarrassed me, man. We we going all the way. And he made up some some wild story that I turned around and I tried to swing on him and all this other stuff. But I ended up beating it. And I got some money out of his pocket. Best believe that. But I, I don't think it was worth it going through all that at that time. I don't sound like it was, man. It sounded like you just let your pride get the best of you, man. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, looking back at it now, I mean, but it's it's kind of hard when, when you know you're right and somebody tries to do, like, how would you feel if that happened to you in front of your kids now? They come and they pull you over. They say you, whatever, we found this in your car. Then by the time they get to the priest and it's like, Nah, you know, we made a mistake, man. Just go ahead. But now you got to go home and tell your son, listen, man, they made a mistake. That, honestly, I'm, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. God forbid. God forbid, bro. That shit happened right now. You you would have to hold that shit, man. I even, mean, if he, if he, even if he hemmed you up in front of your kid? Okay, so tell me what the alternative is. You go through the process. This is what happened with me. I went through the process. Mm -hmm. I beat it because of the people that. And that's another thing. It, and I look. This is why I look at like the, the 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 law system, how it works. I was fighting this case, and because it had it dealt with a cop, they didn't want to dismiss it. They wanted to give me what was called like an ACD which is a German contemplating dismissal. So mm -hmm. if, if nothing happened within six months, then it gets like sealed, dismissed, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, nah, I didn't do anything. They're like, oh, well, you know, he's a cop. It's his word against you, but he has the most power because he's a cop, right? So I said, all right, I got three witnesses. My brother at the time was a military, in the military, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, my cousin was school safety, and at the time, all was working in a hospital. So it's like all these people I'm around, and I was on the job at the time too. They still want to take my my um my word. So as soon as I brought my brother, we we go on the court for like six months. They're like, all right, bring me your brother in. Go meet with the ADA. He sat in there and told them the exact same story I told them. She got on the phone. She said, you got this case? They're like, yeah. Okay, dismiss it. He's not even going to show up. Just dismiss it right now. But why? Now, if and this is what I say about the, uh, the, the law system. I'm Hispanic. I'm in the Bronx. This is a white cop. I'm by myself. Do I beat this case? No. Oh, that's true. Uh, so, so, so now that we on that, right? It kind of brings us into to, to something that you know I wanted us to to kind of get into. Your son, God forbid, my son, also your son, right? Or anybody who's listening. How do you want your child to handle that situation? Do you want them to handle it like you? How, how you handled it? Because you just said it, and, and I could be wrong. You said that it wasn't worth it going through all of that. So do you want your child going through what you would? How would you coach them through that situation? I mean, you know what? why I say it wasn't worth it? Because at that time, I was on probation mm-hmm. from the job. Mm-hmm. So that put me into a loop. Had I not been on probation and... Or maybe in a regular job where that didn't affect me, I would have went through it because I feel was right as was right. And it, I mean, listen, man, we work in a place where <laughs> shit happens. Mm-hmm. We're not always right, you know. And then you was like, "All right, man, I got some extra commissary." You know, I made a mistake. Now, some of them should do go about it that way. You know what I'm saying? Because. It's like an abuse of power at times, and it's mostly done to people of our skin complexion. Mm. You don't go to a rich town and, and think something like this happens, because in these rich towns, you're actually serving your community as a police officer. Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to think twice about putting a fraudulent charge on one of these people, because you know that person has the money and the means to get you out of your position. So why do we feel comfortable doing it to our own people or in these impoverished community? Why? Because we we deem that we're better than them and they don't have the means to go about it that way. I respect that. So, (laughs) Fred, I want to ask you a question. Because right now your son is out. He's away at college. Right. God forbid he calls you and the wife one day. Yo, dad, listen. I got into some trouble with the law. I didn't do nothing wrong. They're telling me if I fess up to this thing that I that I didn't do nothing wrong. A few months it'll go away. But I ain't do nothing wrong. What are you telling him to do? Damn, that's tough, man. Um, <clears throat> you would want him to fight for his convictions? Like, if he feels he didn't do nothing wrong, I, I would say follow what you feel is right and just know that there may be consequences from it. But when you decide what you decide, we'll support you 100%. It's a tough, t- it, it, it's, it's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all something, man, and, y- and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. I definitely feel like growing up, especially now, it, it, it's, it's a tough ways to go. But I will say this, I hate watching videos on YouTube or you see it on the news where people are having interactions with law enforcement and they're acting irate and all this other stuff. Now, granted, 
there, there, there are situations where, you know, somebody might be stepping o- o- over the line this way or that way. I, I, I can, I can attest to that, right? But this dude, Killer Mike, said something one time, and I agreed with it wholeheartedly. I feel like what people need to teach their kids and teach their brothers and their sisters and hell, like some of us need to teach our parents. When it comes to law enforcement, right, you need to survive the encounter and handle all of that other shit later. That's just that's just how I feel. Like, I feel like you need to survive the interaction that you're having by any means necessary and, and deal with all of that other stuff afterwards. I think right now, every, every police officer got a camera on in 2024. Every one of them. Mm-hmm. Every one of them. And everyone has has right to th- those videos at some point and, you know, all of that other stuff. But I just, I hate to see these videos where you, you see people and and it's just like a lot of unnecessary stuff. Like you getting pulled over and they ask if you like this and all of this other stuff. And then you're going to get a ticket. Take the ticket and fight, fight afterwards. Don't get into no argument with no police officer on the side of the road. I mean, yo, like Spinner, am I? Do you think I'm I'm I'm, I'm wrong? You're 100 percent right, and and that's see, like in my incident, that's what happened with me. He put me in a headlock. I put my hand straight up. I I know better, you know. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I fought it the right way. I went about it, legal system. Boom! I put a, a lawsuit on him afterwards. What I like I said, maybe it is getting misconstrued. What I do re- the parts I regress because it conf- conflicted with my job. So mm-hmm. now I was on probation. They extended my probation. I had to deal with a lot of stuff at that time. But like if <coughs> if that wasn't it, that's the right way to go. Don't ever I wouldn't if a cop pulls me over right now, I'm not going back and forth. I might just ask you one question. Can I know why you pulled me over? All right. Whatever answer you give me, whether I know you telling me 100% a lie, I'm not going to fight with you. Okay, sir. All right. Whatever. Grab the ticket. Even if he was to put me under arrest. All right. And just go about it. And then, like you said, survive the encounter and deal with it later and see how you go. But I believe that everybody, if only if they know the truth, and they know they did right. They should fight it because what happens is like what happens to us in the, in our job, right? When you get into the, these use of force incidents, what they tell you? Oh, you good? Just just sign this paper. You good? Just sign this paper. But what what does that happen to your name? They building up a track record on you. So now, when the God forbid, when you do get into that bad one, what they gonna say? Well, listen, man. We've been telling him for the last five years. Look, we got a <laughs> we got a fold on him. So when you don't fight, when you feel is a hundred percent right. Now I'm not telling you if you wrong and you did something. Hey, you got to deal with your own consequences, right, man. Right, right. But if you feel like you're a hundred percent right and what you did what was right and somebody made a mistake and that caused you. You should, you should be able to. And that's what, like I said, it, it all comes down to money, man, because why is it that that somebody that has a good legal counsel is getting away with it, but we we get these legal aids or our family can't afford none, and we gain these probations. So now, God forbid, you, did, you do get caught up in a car with somebody that's riding dirty is not true. Now you become it. So... It's just when you write, you write. I, 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 that's what I believe in, and that's what I think people should do. Now, don't lie to me and say you know, because I'm, I am gonna write out with my son, and my son says, Dad, I didn't do nothing. You know, this what happened. And you, come on, man. You know from our job, you know you got some people that they take their their roles and they take it to a high level and they use it to abuse. When they, when you know, they don't because. They've never been in that position or they never felt like they had power over anything. So now they use it when they know they could do it. So, you know, and and it's messed up, man. It's just messed up that you got people in the world that would do that. But listen, um, 
with that said, man, I know I know a lot of people have this adage. They feel like, you know, one bad apple spoils the bunch. And, you know, uh, they want to know why people don't call out, call out the, you know, call out everybody that's doing wrong. But I, I, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it like this. As long as every profession in this world involves having a human to, to, to do it, it's going to be false. As long as there's a living, breathing person behind that occupation, shit is going to happen. You're going to have some ro- ro- robots, too, man. So they're not just you. <laughs> You're going to have some chat GBTs. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have. They're not just humans, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen, I-, I could tell you how many times you don't went to McDonald's and your order be, be-, be fucked up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I many- didn't even order the-, <laughs> the fish sandwich. What the hell, man? You know what I'm saying? How many times you expecting a package, you open the package up, the shit is in, in shambles, in pieces. Or, or I don't know, just, just ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing. <laughs> ain't nothing Your but air. The air bubbles. <laughs> you open the box, it's just the air bubbles, the pe- the shipping, <laughs> the shipping joint. You know what I'm they saying? Got, they got me for an air po- uh, pair of AirPods like that, man. That's because you still live in the projects, man. Oh. <laughs> come on, come on, school bus boy. What you mean, school bus boy? <laughs> You used to ride in a school bus, right? I never rode in a yellow school bus. I didn't say it was yellow. <laughs> see, see how you try. You had your own school bus, though, right? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? So you didn't see. Here about- we go again with the lot. <laughs> you see, he's doing it again. B. He's doing it again. You he's didn't come up here and say that a bus used to pick you out from your school. First, no, that's not what I said. I said in high school we had city buses, city buses that was that would be designated just to take the students home, um, and, and to stop at the stops that would, uh, you know, the regular city bus ride. <laughs> I never had a, a a personal school bus. See, here we go. You sounded it, a little it, nervous on that one. <laughs> you were it, it stuttering sound, a little it bit. Like- Oh, so didn't it sound like it was their own personal bus that will go to their school and pick them up? That's that's what I took. All right, I'm I'm sorry. I, I apologize. So wait, time out, time out. How did you get home from school? Would Are you, you walk the reg- the re- no the regular bus or the train? But I they didn't specifically come into my school to pick us up. We had to walk to the bus stop. <laughs> See, I can't even front. I was a yellow school bus kid. So. Yeah, <laughs> but come on, but you you lived in a town, right? You didn't live in yeah. the. See, so yeah, that's that's that. excusable. This guy's from the city. <laughs> his own bus come pick him up. So you, what you trying to say? I grew up privileged. Like I don't understand. What are you trying to get at? I didn't. I mean, listen, man. You I didn't take school. a regular cab. It was one of, one of those like private joints. <laughs> Yo, listen, man. We're not even gonna sit here and, and try to compare. I will say this, man. The, the Bronx is far dirtier than than Far Rockaway. So I was, I, we were we a little more privileged than y'all? I, I would agree. So we we went to school with a vast majority of, of uh, you know, races and students and all that stuff. So we might have had a little more benefits uh, to, to to certain things. Like we had music programs, we had computer classes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know no, L. You, I, you know, about the Bronx sound like a third world country. No, what Listen. You to say? So you gonna tell me? Your high school ain't have a, li- a license plate printing class. <laughs> that was the other one. That was the other one. Us now, my school did good, man. They Ralph Lauren graduated from there. Who? The guy that makes polo, man. He went there when you went there. Nah. <laughs> so then you can't. To, then you can't as fucking a fact, claim him. There's a politician right now that I played in high school football with me. That he grad. My school. Uh, Back then, you see how these high schools are like broken up now. Like yes, yes. So we we were one school, but we had like a real high honors program, and they got a lot. Huh? Nah. (laughs) (laughs) Let me me tell you, my school was like it was top. I was in health careers, and 
Yo, great program. Like, they actually take you your junior year and they have you work in Montefiore Hospital, get you trained to go into, like, the health field. But... You had to clean people's asses and shit. I wasn't with it, man. And, and you had to be at school at like 7 o'clock, so I just dropped that shit. <laughs> so you I, dropped out of high school? Out of that, that program, man. So it, my junior year, I used to come to like fourth period. I used to go to three classes, fourth, fifth, seventh. Was that your then, schedule or that's just what you decided to do? No, because like I said, I was in that program, and that, that program was zero, one, and two. Third period was automatic lunch. And we used to be able to go outside for lunch. That's why I went to that school. And because of the football team. That's like a BOCE school, right? It sounds like a BOCE school. It was the uh, Clan High School in the Bronx. It wasn't. But it was just. They had good (laughs) programs. How many high schools you went to? Me? Yeah. Why? Yo, you a liar, man. Yo, you told me the other day that you went to two high schools. You said you dropped out of one school. And went to I was another college. College. I went to like, I went to two colleges. I went to Iona, then I went to Stony Brook. You a storyteller. Man. High, I, yeah, high school. I went there all four years, man. And what what high, school. high school was this again? He was playing high school, man. I ain't never heard of that school. Y'all must have had a bum football team. <laughs> Come on, man. And what position you played? Free safety, tight end, defensive end. My team was small back then, man. What that mean? I mean, y'all was trash? Nah, we had some players. We had, like, the um, a wide receiver. He ended up going to Texas A&M. And then we had um, we had a, a middle linebacker slash running back. He went to Buffalo University and ended up in the NFL. That's what's up. What, so uh, we, what, had, we had players. What, what cut your football career short? Oh, that's a long story, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I, I got it. I did. I went to Iona to play football, and I just I didn't pass my physical. So by the time I did clear it, it was like late in the season, and I didn't want to be a tackling dummy. Long story short, for any kids that are listening, don't do drugs. Drugs are <laughs> <God> never. <damn. laughs> don't do drugs, yeah. please. Please. He went straight to it. He didn't even build to it. He went right to it. Don't do drugs, kids. Please. They're, they're, no, they're no good at any age. They don't never do your body no good. They're not right? good, man. Don't do drugs. You're right. Don't do drugs. Drugs are bad. You, you'll lose your hairline like me and Eli. I ain't lose my hairline. Don't bring me into that shit. I still got my motherfucking head. I still got my hair on. I ain't taking my hat off. No. Yo. no. Yo, also, take your hat off, bro. <laughs> Don't eat, that man. hairline has you, seen better days, man. You 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 using that black spray our partner used to wear? What black spray? Are you talking about the Just for Men joint? I ain't using that. <laughs> Was it the Carlos Boozer? Remember when he did that? He came out <laughs> one day no hair, next day he's all black. Come on, man. No, you ain't man. fooling nobody. Man, look like you got some car oil up there. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, man, I ain't using, I ain't, I'm not using none of that stuff, man. When it's time to go home, man, I'm, it's time to go home. You know, L been ball since he was in junior high school. So hey, some of some of us are still holding on, man. We got that. Oh you no, know, nah, you got the little it, long, the little long hair holding on while I can. At least it's going back, and you know, evenly. So you good? Your man over there, he got the like, he got the Batman, the the peak. <laughs> and that's that's no good. You got to get rid of that, man. <laughs> hey yo, fuck you, man! Don't be coming on this show telling people I got the Batman symbol shit. Yo, man, man you see I mean, them corners? Once the corners start going, man, that's what happened to me, man. It's over. I used to get the Anuel, man. I used to leave it like long back hair. <laughs> I used to comb it, up, comb it over, hit it with the jelly. I was good. By the time, it, by the time I got home, all you saw was this. <laughs> Hey, yo, see, and that's another reason why y'all can't be believing nothing that he say. How, how many bald Dominicans y'all know? You know what I'm saying? Yo, this oh, dude, man. this out. Listen, I don't know a lot racist, of man. That's racist. <laughs> how is that racist to say that I don't know any bald Dominicans? Every Dominican I know got hair, bro. Come on, man. There's a few of them. 
He yo, he don't even got a full beard, B. Hey, when you ever see a Dominican with a patchy beard? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> but this is coming from Patchy himself over yo, here. Yo, listen, I, I got a problem growing hair. What you want me to tell you? Yeah, B. Come on, man. It happens to the best of us, man. Listen, blame my ancestors. Don't blame me. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I can't control my gene pool. So anyway, uh, 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 as we're on that topic right there, how y'all feel about uh, knowing when to let go of the past? Right? And, and, and I ask that because, you know, Spin, I know you have uh, since retired from our field. Um, you know, at, at what point going through that process did you mentally say to yourself, all right, it's time for me to start figuring out another chapter for my life? Or are you still going through that? Yeah, I mean, I'm still going through it and, and trying to figure out, but as far as laying that goal, like, and I, <laughs> I laugh because I'm in like several chats with different people. And you know, I'm, we got this habit that when we ain't like something, we're just like focused, so focused on it. So any news that comes out, I was like, yo, hey, here's a, let me put it on the chat. This happened. I'm like, yo. And I, I only say this to the people that's retired on the chat. Like, one, do you know that person? And two, why do you even care anymore? Mm. And then I, oh man, you, you disgruntled you. This is like, no, like. Why are you still stuck over there when you just turned a new leaf and you you should be like, far, you shouldn't even care what's going on over there. Do you care what happens in your elementary school right now? <laughs> That's a good point. It's true. That's a good point. Because you're not there no more right now. I get it. Now, if it's like I tell them, if it's somebody that you know and that we know, granted, cool, you know, Oh man, if they are right, reach out to them, a collection, anything, or, or anything that affects us at this moment. But for you to tell me, yo, this happened or such and such in, in that place, and, and and you know, and I don't know, maybe like as I'm getting older, I'm just getting a little bit more too more real. If it doesn't affect you or what's going on with you, why do you care? Mm. What did what 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 are we talking about? You just at that point you just be in the news and you just want to gossip about whatever. I I would rather have a conversation about what's going on with you, what you got going on. And if I start sensing that all you got going on is this job or something that doesn't have to do with you, maybe you you know you need to find something else or, or involve yourself more into something your family or, or a new hobby or something because and and you know I, I was guilty of that every day oh man you can't believe what happened there and people would look at me crazy like did it happen to you why do you care oh. but it, that because at a certain point we make that like the center of our lives whatever it could be it could be uh a video game oh you know what happened in mad in the day or oh, or you know, you know what happened at work, and it has absolutely nothing to do with you. And that just tells me that you have nothing going on for yourself. And it, you know, and maybe you should look in and find something to do. Like go coach somebody, go help the next person. You know, or go to go back to school, read a book. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, so you know. Like you say that, bro, and and I, I 100% agree. Like I, I agree with you 100% because it's the same thing with me. Like I'm un, I'm involved with chats, like all of us, all three of us. You're involved in some of these chats, and it's 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 kind of sad when you see people. They allow the things that are uh, going on in their lives to the, like consume them pretty much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's not always something positive. Because this is the difference when you're talking about something consistently and it's something positive and it's something that could build you up or build up the next person. That's way different, I feel like. But when you're constantly talking about something negative via be the job or 
Yo, man, yo, look at what's going on here in the city. Yo, I'm always broke. Yo, my girl, you know what I'm saying? She pregnant. I don't know if the kids is mine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, yo, if you always got some kind of negativity going on, man, that's like, I I feel sorry for you. Like, I, like you mean to tell me ain't nothing positive going on in your life ever? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's nothing going on the good that you could talk about. And, and I feel like, honestly, like with the work that we get involved in, we're just surrounded by so much negativity that it's kind of hard to see past that. You know, they, there was a line in that, the you know, the Bob Marley movie that just came out um, where I forget who won, I guess one of the wives, she said to him, when you swim in pollution, you become polluted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you're not going to tell me that if you're surrounded by negativity for the majority of your day and for ma- the majority of your life, and, you know, especially like what we do, you're talking about you doing this for, for 10 plus, 15 plus, 20 plus years. You're not going to tell me that it's not going to uh, alter your mental at some point. I don't even care if you're not doing our job. It could be something, you could be in a bad relationship for 20 years. You could be in a bad relationship for two years. You could be in, you could be uh, raised by toxic parents. You could have uh, toxic friendships for, for X amount of years and never realize it. You know what I'm saying? But I think that the, the sooner that you come into a realization that it's time to let go of that past, then the better off you'll be. You know what I'm saying? And like, like, like spending, like, do you feel like <clears throat> since you've let that part of your life go, like your overall mental and physical health has been better? Like I see earlier today, you posted that you, you ran fucking three miles today, bro. Like you wasn't doing that when you was on the job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This dude used to come to work half drunk with a belly full of, full of Chinese food. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> about that. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, how do you feel like your life has changed since that? To be honest, man, for the better, man, like, just around more, like, I get to pick up my daughter now from school, and she's always with me, take her to swimming classes, do her homework, you know, and it's, it's just not consumed. And you know what it was? It wasn't it wasn't the job, let's say, but I was just so consumed in what was going on at the job. Oh. That whatever was going on at home, it was just like secondary or you know, and it's just cause like like what you just said, you was just or oh, I me, mean, I was in this space where I'm just going around what everybody else is doing and trying to make that like the center because I had nothing else going on, which a lot of us don't, you know, don't have at that time. And we're just, we were young. We get this job when we're in the twenties, you know, and get this money. Don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, You know, you over here, you find yourself competing with the next person or doing this or just, Oh my God, we didn't get stuck today. Let's go out. (laughs) Like you said, (laughs) bullshit wins. When, (laughs) You know, you look back at it, it's like, damn, I was I was dumb. Who the hell goes out on a Monday or Tuesday just for not getting stuck type of thing? But it's just, it, I mean, it, it's great, man, for me. It's just, I get so much, like, free time. And that negativity, man, I, I, I got close friends, too, that they come in. And I used to tell them, like, straight up, like, man, why you always got to be so negative? And I just started finding that people... They get offended or whatever, or they look at you like, oh, you think that you're this great messiah now because you don't look at things negative. It's not. Nah, I'm not, but it's just, there's got to be one thing that happened good for you today. Mm. There's got to be one thing. And, I, and I'm, pos- I'm, I'm 100% sure if you really look at your day, there's at least three things that you could be grateful for that you might just overlook. So... When like exactly what you said, when you consume yourself in that negativity, that's all you start seeing. Yeah. 
Mm. It leaks in and it's so toxic. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, the sun is too hot today. (laughs) Yo, I deal with people like that all the time. All the time. Yeah, and it it, it brings you down. And you know, that's what I say. Like, I got to a point where I started just like, I try to steer steer people out of those conversations or I ask them open-ended questions. Oh, so what did you have to eat today? Oh, I ate this. Oh, all right, so it was good then, right? You, you had a good meal. Like, that's one thing you should be grateful for. Some people, somewhere else, didn't have nothing to eat. I, instead of, oh, my God, this car stopped in front of me and he's driving like a, a maniac. <laughs> right? Move around for a minute, man. The, the only... This, and this one thing I learned from when I retired, right? Mm-hmm. There's only one thing you can control, and that's you. I can't right. control E. I can't control Oso. But I can control what comes out of my mouth and what I do right now. And it's okay if I made a mistake. If I said something wrong right now, I could change it the very next minute. And that's the power that we have with that with free will. You could change any circumstance you're in. But you got to want to do it. And you got to do it yourself. Yo, you know what, man? I I, I will attest to that. Because, yo, Spinner, even, yo, bro, even this week, when Diggs got traded, we was all in the uproar in the chat. Was crying. Yeah. Shit, yeah, you was crying in that chat like a little baby. <laughs> like a little baby. First of all. That's what I love about that chat, man. That chat, I swear to God, I could just pop in and read the thread between you guys, and I'll be at work dying. Absolutely cracking up. It's between Eli crying and, and your man Jimmy opening up the Frank stand every other minute for no reason. It's crazy. <laughs> you can't even get a good conversation <laughs> when you get assaulted or something, man. Yo, I will say this, man. <clears throat> We was all we was highly disgusted about the news that had just dropped, and all of ninety five percent of us was in there. We was we was beefing about it. Spinner was the only one. This was his first message, and I'm gonna read it ver. <laughs> I'm gonna read it verbatim. He said, "You guys take them panties out your ass and relax." <laughs> he did. That's what he said. That was the first. verbatim. That was his yeah. line right there, man. You know what I'm saying? And. Sometimes it takes that person in your life to tell you the shit that you need to hear. And I tell this to my friends all the time. I don't need you, t- respectfully, I don't need you telling me all the shit that you think might make me feel good all the time. Because to me, that's not a real friend. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like that's not a real friend. Sometimes my friend needs to tell me the shit that don't sound pretty. Like, if you're a friend and we link up and you ain't seen me in a while, don't be afraid to say to me, yo, e, yo you looking kind of fat, bro. You need to go to the gym. <laughs> and Spinner's definitely one of those dudes. He be like, yo, man, yo, you need a bra, son, or something. Like, he'll say something. <laughs> yo, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he'll say something that 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 you need to hear and it'll be like initially I'll be like hey yo your teeth is yellow or some shit whatever you know what I'm saying like it'll be like yo whatever but yo a real friend that's what they'll do for you B. they'll tell you the shit that you don't want to hear and and that's just that's just how life is man and another part of that I honestly feel like is recognizing when you're a hindrance. A lot of people don't realize at some point, everyone becomes a hindrance. I, I, I'll, say it to, I'll say it about myself, right? I'm gonna use myself as a prime example. I know for a fact, I have a legitimate problem when it comes to talking people into doing stuff that they're not supposed to do. <laughs> A very big problem. <laughs> like, no, I'm a, no bullies, man. No tonight, for instance. 
Excuse me? Tonight? Huh? You, you had it tonight while we were chilling. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Our, our group of friends met up tonight, and uh, we had a, a, a pleasant gathering. You know, I, I was sitting in the corner minding my business, eating snacks, watching uh, the things on the television while everybody else was partaking in, you know, adult activities. But that's neither here, neither here nor there. But like I said, I know that I have a problem when it comes to talking people into, into uh, doing things that they're not supposed to do, mainly because I can't do it. Right. So. Once I recognize that, I, you know, I chalk it up that, that to being all in fun and stuff like that. You know, you could call it instigating. You could call it, you know, you could call it whatever you want. But I know that that's a problem me. And when I recognize it, I stop it. Some people don't realize when they are the problem. And at some point, you have to understand you are the problem. And you need to fix that. It could be in your relationship. It could be as a parent. It could be as a friend. It could be as a... Whatever it is, maybe it could be a coach, yourself as a coach. Maybe it could be, I don't care what it is, but the sooner that sometimes some of us realize that we are the problem in the situation and you could look at yourself in the mirror and say, yo, yo, I got to do better. I feel like life will change tremendously. I'll give another example. And that's, but before you yeah. go on, that's yeah. what happens. Like. For those that are able to recognize it and do it and act on it, it changes for the better. But there's so many people out there that get stuck in it and think they're not the problem. Think they're not, you know, doing a horrible job. And they just, they stay what they're doing because they don't have that person to either tell them or that self-realization to, to get it that you're the problem. I, I agree with you 100%. Spinner, let me ask you a question, bro. Yeah. I want you to be honest since you've been lying on this whole show. <laughs> Give us an example of something that you realized or came to the realization that you was a hindrance and you was a problem. Something you don't mind sharing. I ain't going to ask you to, you know, go into your, like, your sex life when you realize that you wasn't doing the right thing. <laughs> God damn it. Like it was you that wasn't pleasuring your woman that she was. But give us an example of, <laughs> of something that, that you, you know what I'm saying? We all grown here. Nah, man, just, you know what? And maybe that's the way I am now, man. I I felt like I always used to be like a yes man. Mm. Like if you was my man and you said, oh man, I got this, I got these $20,000 right now, man. You think I should go buy a BMW? Mind, mind you, you living in your mom's house. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, man. I think, And you know what? It had a lot to do with I didn't want to go into conflict with people. And I didn't want to go like, I didn't want to argue with you. I just, yo, let's go have fun. Or if you did something to me, I'd just be like, all right, whatever, man. You're not going to do it again. And I just let things go by, and I I felt like I started getting into the like these empty relationships with people. Mm. It's like what are what are we doing for each other, man? We, cause it's all fun and games when you know when you're up and the lights is glowing and you you doing your thing. But what happens when you're there by yourself? And you down bad. Yeah, and when that stops or something. So I I. I made it. I I made myself a promise that if I see something wrong, or if I see you going down the wrong path, I'm gonna say something, man. Because God forbid I don't, and I'm yes, mess, yes, man, and you to death, and you think it's right, and because you believe it's right, you go do something worse. So now that's gonna be on my conscience, man. It's just, and, and you know what? And I appreciate that, man. And people. I'd rather somebody tell me the truth. Listen, man, you know, you're doing bad. Go go shave your head. Whatever the case. Any little thing. Or maybe you should be doing this instead of doing that. And I might not agree with you at that point, but I'm I'm to the point where I'm not bigger than 
to have a conversation with anybody about anything. And now that doesn't mean that we got to be cool after it, right? But we can have that conversation and say, listen, this is where I felt like you did me wrong. This is where you, you know, I feel like I did you wrong. Where can we meet? All right, we're not going to be cool? Cool. But I would hope that you get out of that interaction something better and that you'll do better. Because that's all it comes down to, man. You don't, we don't all got to be friends, but we should all be able to help somebody else mm. be better. Especially the mm. kids. And on that, on that respect right there, what you just said, I think that this is what it's all about right now. Because at, at a certain point, the life that you live in is not about you anymore. It's about the legacy that you're trying to put forth for your kids. And, and yeah, it, 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 it helps. The finances help, don't get me wrong. I think I think the finances and the money makes life a whole hell of a, a hell of a lot easier for you and your family and your children. But I feel like if you don't have a good base in your morality and you don't have a good uh, a base in just a sense of being a good person, then you're not going to be able to help your kids. And don't get me wrong and then, you know I've said this and I mentioned this many times before like we know a lot of people in situations where, you know, they they their their relationship with their kids aren't the best, and and a lot of times it's it's not even like a direct thing between them and their kids. There's some kind of hindrance. There's some kind of uh, a faulty relationship between the parents and stuff like that, and you can't help it. And it is what it is. But when you can control, like when you control the things that you can control, at that point it's it's on you. Like I I I, I cherish the fact that I'm able, by the grace of God, to see my kids every day. Just today, my son was involved in in a race over at the at the high school, and I was, you know, what I'm saying, I, yeah, you know, it's when I Yo, sent you the video. You threw that other kid a banana peel, man. That's messed up. <laughs> no. that way, Trying man. to go real life Mario Kart. <laughs> He, yo, his son was losing. All of a sudden, you see, you see the kid just stumble. <laughs> you are flipping all that, bro. And, he did that. He did that in football. Yeah. His little guy had that long touchdown pass. He, well, you didn't see in the video is Elijah kicking that foot out, knocking that defender down. That's what that was. Yo, you a good father for that, man. But that, come on, man. Your moral compass. Got Let him to- earn it. Let him earn it. Yeah, come on, man. Nope. The sad part is that his son doesn't know that he did that for him. So his son just thinks that he just, you know, he earned it. It's fine. But we know the truth, man. We know the truth. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here <laughs> and allow y'all to besmirch my, my, my good character and my good name. I have never now, nor would I ever cheat in in in, in lieu of my child's a- athletic uh, athletic prowess. Okay, it's not my fault that the child that my son was racing to get racing against decided to collapse within the last few legs of the race. Uh, <laughs> what you want me to tell you? People just raising their kids. The kid ain't have no heart, man. What you want me to do? <laughs> he ain't have no heart. <laughs> yeah, the kid ain't have no heart. If he had heart, he would have finished the race. What you want me to tell you? See, but that's that's how he is. <laughs> we had our flag football game last year, right? <laughs> this is before I knew Big E. It was his team who was undefeated against my team. Uh, here we go with another. Here we go with another falsehood story. And we beat them. Only team to beat them. We beat them by like three touchdowns. Tell them how that happened. <laughs> tell them how that happened. He's gonna tell you a story of his kids being sick. Wasn't no kids sick. We Yo, just Spinner, handled I business will send you, with I, superior coaching. He, you hear what he just said? We didn't have no sick kids. There's one picture on Facebook of one of my players throwing up in the background on the field as one of his kids was scoring a touchdown. But we didn't have no sick kids. 
Listen, I'm going to give you that, man. I'm going to give and you then that. He, he yelled at his kids, y'all ain't got no heart. We lose, y'all ain't got no heart. Get What's off my field. Uh, what you want me to tell you, man? If they had heart, we would have won. Yo, e- Eli reminds me of a coach I had when I played semi-pro football, man. <clears throat> we, would, we was down in... um. Time out before you finish. Now, now, now he plays semi pro football. Mind you, we had a whole conversation earlier. We had a whole conversation earlier about him being in college and high school. He not once mentioned that he did semi pro, but but y'all yeah, believe but in this dude. It's, it's called that, but that shit is like Sandlot, man. It's everybody got a job and you just on the football team. It's right, not semi. We don't get paid. Actually, we pay into it. But ask my brother. I, me That's and my like brother a rec league. That's not semi pro. But that's what it's called. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> you know, semi, me. semi-pro. Now that's semi-pro, bro. You mean like arena football or no, the Canadian not, Football League? Not like me and my friends down the block? <laughs> no, no, not. It, it was real teams. It was like, and they had big divisions. Baltimore teams, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Ask my brother, man. Yeah, so kind of, oh, did, so... It would be like, like let's say the corrections team. That's considered a semi-pro team. Y'all had matching uniforms. <laughs> yeah, we were we were actually the Bengals, man. We used to have black helmets with the orange stripes. Cool. It was a, I mean, can can I say I was semi-pro in in baseball because I played in a beer league? <laughs> Does that count? I mean, was it official? Is that or was it like we had matching jerseys? <laughs> I guess. Yo, Spinner, what was your story, bro? I apologize. I shouldn't have interrupted. Go ahead, man. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of sounded like my coach, man. We was down in, in the game in <clears throat> Connecticut. We're down like 42 zip at the half. And he's like, come on, guys. You know, you know, man. It's a new half, man. The score is zip zip. The game is zip zip, man. We got this. And we're looking at him like, you must be out your mind, man. The, this team is ready to put a hundred on us. <laughs> you talking about a zip zip? Like, where, where do you come up with these things, man? Yo, know, we had we had the best halftime halftime speech to the point where the coach blew his own back out. Hey, yo! Hey. <laughs> Yelling at them kids. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 listen, man, we're going to have to start picking our words better when we tell these stories. But first of all, that's between this dude and that shit with me on my knees and this dude just now. Listen, I was giving an inspirational speech to the children because uh, we were losing at halftime. And I was yelling to the point so bad I started getting back spasms. Still going to say I blew my back out of your Yo, We should just leave the back out of it, man. What is your back? You got injured, man. That's all. I got injured. Now I got injured. Now I got fucking injured. Yo, man, this 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 show has been uh, hella, hella capping man, because y'all dudes been telling lies since the, the moment we opened this show. And you definitely was capping on your knees that night. <laughs> You see what he did there? He brought it full circle. That's he brought it all the way back around. <laughs> Pathological liar, B. That's why you ain't got no hair. That's why God took your hair, because you a liar, B. Listen, man, that's why he took yours too, man, because there ain't a lot I of them. I still got hair, motherfucker. I don't know what you're talking about. I still got hair. I even got something to spare down here. You know, it ain't much, but. How you got a whole bunch of hair down here? You missing all hair, man. Because <laughs> I'll be cutting it. I'll be, I'll be trimming this down low. I'll be trimming my shit low. Oh, so, yeah. I don't, so the patches are just trimmed low? <laughs> now, I got patches right now because I ain't brush it all day because it's my day off. So I'll be, I'll be but bumming we, it. But we're the liars. We're the liars. <laughs> what you I'm, telling, I'm telling you the truth. I, I got a brush here, man. Nah, I ain't brush it. If I had my brush down here, I'd brush it, and all of this would all of this would line up. But right now, you know, I'm black, so I, 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 our stuff is kind of like it be curling up and all of that. 
So if you uncurled it, it looked like mine. Is what you're saying? Nah, man. You had that beard since you was in elementary school. <laughs> I saw those pictures, man. You you hairy, bro. You've been you been hairy, old. bro. Sure, the man. nicknames, the nicknames in, in elementary school growing up. If you were a hairy dude, they're the fucking worst, man. Yo, I, hate, I hate it. Huh? You see, yeah, you know he's hairy, man. Yo, we was just out in Puerto Rico. Us and the wives was out in Puerto Rico, bro. So you saw him with, with what? No shirt on? He was at the beach. He <laughs> was to tell you. Hey, whatever y'all do together, y'all do. Ah, oh, here you go. <laughs> here you go, bro. Here you go I with just, the nonsense. I, I wouldn't call another man hairy or hairless, you know, unless it's their, their facial hair. That should be the name of the podcast, E. What? Hairy and hairless. <laughs> Whatever you into, man, you still my boy, man. Yeah, you my boy too, man. Even though you a pathological liar and you throwing <laughs> dirt, yo, this dude is a uh uh yo, he'll throw dirt on anybody name, yo. He talk about his own mother if it if it uh if it get him a you heard you heard him say earlier, man, he would let his brother get violently assaulted and not even help him out. And we yeah. gonna sit here and Whatever, Listen, man, you yeah, guys we, tell we were actually talking about you earlier. Yes, we was, B. <laughs> we're all chilling, and we were talking about the first time I got introduced to you in the chat, and you went at our boy Jimmy because of his, his man cave. And, yo, I just sat there like, what the fuck is going on? I was dying. Yo, listen, man, this dude is definitely uh, no diddy. He's an acquired taste to a lot of people. You know, but well, you know what's funny, man? They get at me, but when Eli gets on Xavier, he kills him. Nobody says nothing. <laughs> Nobody says nothing. He's calling him all sorts of names. Or oh, this is why you walked over here from your country. Whatever he said, nobody. And I. And you know what's funny? Yo, well, I happens, never say no shit like this, that. This happens to me in a lot of chats, right? Because I look at it, and, and like we was going back to earlier. Is it me? Is it really me? <laughs> Am I the problem? A lot, a lot of people say some crazy shit. Nobody, every ha ha ha, that shit was funny. Like, when Respondo, yo, Respondo used to say some crazy shit to people. People just laugh. Let me say something, something smaller than that. Oh my God! Wow, how could you say I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nobody's gonna say nothing to him, but it's to be, huh? But whatever, man. I I just know that's the way it is, man. I ain't got hey, no yo, listen, listen, man. Listen, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, yo, listen, man. Yo, yo, yo. Also, I, wrap this up because I can't stand this dude no more. He's you done told that was one a big beer you drank there today. It should have still that shit is hot. Baby nah, this is my mug I got from uh I got from medieval times. Ain't nothing too crazy in there. I got two angry orchards in here with a little, you know, my usual shit, my usual fireball shit. And yo, listen, also Spinner, I know uh you haven't drank a, a drink in about two years, bro. Uh I commend you. My hat's off to you on that. You've been on you've been on your healthy living kick, bro. I, I wanna give you your flowers in front of everybody and tell you I'm proud of you, bro. I know you definitely on your healthy living kick, even though you still eat fast food, which I don't understand if you're trying to live healthy. Hey man, um, all of us here eat something worse than all that. So it doesn't matter, man. Shit happens. What? Bro. Your life. <laughs> what? I'm not even gonna ask you to elaborate. <laughs> Or what you talking about right now? Because this is a family show. <laughs> Biggie, give us your wise words of wisdom before we wrap this one up. It's going to be simple, man. And it's because this dude is sitting here right now. Stop lying to yourself. And stop, <laughs> <laughs> and stop lying to other people. Stop lying on people. You know what I'm saying? God is watching you all the time. Just know that. God is watching. He loves all... <laughs> He loves all his children. And if you're a liar, you're going to get punished. And if you don't believe me, just look at Spin Ahead. <laughs> so with that being said, we want to thank Spinner for coming on tonight. Uh, go like, subscribe, Facebook, 
Instagram, OTBS on Facebook, the Sports Frenzy Podcast on <clears throat> YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you guys think. Is Spinner a pathological liar? <laughs> comment below and let us what, know what you guys think. And we'll catch you next week. You see, Peace. you see it, baby. Yo.